So today is the, well, what was the day today, actually? Today is the 3rd of May, 2021. And in the morning, um, to my Persian audience, I said that as long as we're inside this Fibonacci, it's good. But however, as it looks like, we got rejected. We got rejected from the Fibonacci. We wicked inside it, but we got rejected. But that's nothing to worry about because um, we still have until Friday. Uh, it looks good. Obviously, we even have a CME gap around the 61,000s. Um, once we do get inside this Fibonacci level, um, it will have to touch the $61,247 at least once. And after that, it can do whatever it wants. It can come back down, back to the 58s, or it can do break the Fibonacci 0 0.786 and go higher and look at for all-time highs. Now, that's a big one. Uh, overall, it looks fine. I mean... One thing I would have a look at is this bearish divergence, but it looks like it kind of played out because if we start off from here to here, it kind of did play out. It could go lower. I mean, yeah, I'm looking at it. I'm looking at the MACD. I'm looking at the daily from here, but it looks like it played out. I'm still waiting for at least one touch to the 61,000s. Other than that, it just is fine. I wouldn't even worry. Right. Now I'm going to go to Bitcoin dominance because that's more important because it is alt season, everyone. And wow. Oh, shit. Oh, geez. Well, the dominance is exactly at 48. Um, in the morning, it was at 48.7. But wow, that's a big ass candle. Um, the target is, of course, 47.5. 47 46, something like that. Um, this is where it's going to find a support. And I did mention that once we do hit this, there, there could be a likelihood that we have a bounce, a small bounce, nothing big, nothing major, but it will be a small bounce. And you can see all points bleed a little bit, just a little bit. That's fine. It's just a little bit. Oh, um, and I also, I'm, I'm a bit cautious um, because I do see a reversal on the RSI that could be a potential sign that alt season is going to end very soon, everyone. Um, maybe within the three to four weeks, or it could just break horribly down even more. But it's a matter of time. I mean, targets are nearly done. We're nearly at 45. That was the technical targets for alt season. And the prices that you see now are going to be the prices that you get if you're not happy. And this market ain't for you. So, right. Now we're going to go to, uh, well, we, I mean, I would like to look at Bitcoin, Ethereum versus the Bitcoin pair. It did hit all my targets. It actually broke my target. It broke my target. So I'm looking at the 0 0.06 now. Um, I am still waiting for a like, retest. I need a, I need a red tail candle for the 0 0.05 level for Ethereum. Um, but it's just pumping. It is just pumping, and it's saying it's oversold in so many ways. But I would not buy it. If you're someone who has Ethereum right now, I would not buy it. I, I wouldn't buy this. I, I'm looking at the RSI on the daily. It's all about, I'm, I'm not buying into it. I want to see at least one red candle. That's my opinion. And yeah, uh, we can even go to the weekly and see what the weekly is saying. It's, it's all about, I mean, at least we need one or two daily red days. But, hey, look, if you look at this, this is the technical target. The technical target is saying to me that it's 0 0.14. 0 .14. So that means every Ethereum is one-tenth of a Bitcoin, a little bit more than one-tenth. And that is all-time highs. And that would lead Ethereum at maybe ten to $12,000 a piece. That's great. If, if it hits this, and this will be very quick, because if you look at the last altcoin season, we, we are basically here. That's one week, two week, three weeks, four, five, six, seven. That's a month. We'll give or take a month, and it's done. Old season will be done. And that's technically what the dominance is saying here now. The dominance is also saying that we'll be done within a month, roughly. So I would be prepared. I will buy 
any old coins that I can see that is on a discount, especially ones that haven't pumped against their BTC value. And it's not financial advice, but if you hit the stack sets, this is what you're going to be doing. And this is what all these other professional people are doing. Mm. Now we're going to go to other pairs um, like ADA by BTC. You can still see it's still within the range. It still hasn't broken out. It's a buy. Uh, the MACD will bounce from here. It does say that it's going to be bearish, but it's going to bounce. And this is on the weekly, everyone. If the weekly is saying that I'm ready to explode, baby, then know that it's going to explode real quick. So let me check this. ADA is right here. One, two, three weeks. ADA could be at all-time highs in BTC pair within three weeks. That would make ADA $8 a piece in three weeks. That's based on past performance, of course. But that's that's what uh, it will show for ADA. And <laughs> all these coins are just pumping anyways. Uh, even if you look at BNB, you had lazy tweet about BNB today saying it could potentially hit a 1,000. And I'm not doubting that. It could potentially hit a 1,000. It's nearly at the 720 mark. And it could happen very quick. But anyway, this is all the charts for today. So we looked at Bitcoin. We looked at Dominance. We looked at Ethereum. We looked at ADA. And we looked at BNB. So that's five coins. Well, five technical charts we looked at. Now we're going to go to CoinMarketCap. Um, CoinMarketCap is a, is, a, is a domain that you can check the every single token uh, in, in one place. So we got the 24 hours within today's market, which coins pumped, which coins dumped. We have Waves, ONG, Maker, ONT, Wi-Fi. Wow, Wi-Fi, really? Rune, Ethereum, Shitcoin, like BSV, ETC, Theta, Litecoin, Eco. Technically, if you have a old coin, it's probably just pumped today. Um, let's look at who are the losers in the market. Technically, there's no losers. I mean, except for Cello, which is only 5%, but I don't really see that's a loser. I just see it's nobody's bought it yet. And Horizon, it's, it's like 4% down. I mean, who, give, who cares? Um, but the real losers are your fiat money. Tether, USDC, Binance, DAI, Terra USD. All these coins, these fiat money, they're, they're losing value. They are losing value. And it's quite evident here but hey it's fine all right let's look at my trade so it is a 40,000 position and it's only 132 dollars up in the morning it was up a thousand and now it dropped to 132 but there's a reason why it dropped um cme futures have opened up their smaller fund so people can buy one tenth of a bitcoin and short it and that, once that news came down, bloop, it dumped. Why did it dump? Well, technically because these CME people, the ones that are not that rich, they want to get a better price to long Bitcoin. So I, I even said on my Telegram group, hey, guys, I'm not worried about this because it's just quite clear it's manipulation. All right. I'm just going to quickly refresh this panel. For people who just joined in, I am on a Zoom. Just click my name. And you will see a uh, Zoom ID and password. Okay. All right. Uh, let's go for a piece of news that today came out. I'm pretty sure everyone knows about it now. It's a bit late. Um, eBay CEO says that he's looking at cryptocurrency as a payment option. Um, this news isn't really new. It's just funny that he said it again this year. Because in 2019, he said the same thing. If anyone's around in 2019, he was on the news saying... I want to um, do this payment thing for Bitcoin. But he said this in 2019. And obviously the reason why the market didn't really react much to this news is because he already made a promise back in 2019. Why are you saying the same promise again? You're still thinking? It's been three, four years and you're still thinking? Oh my God. I don't know what kind of brain he has, but mm, okay. But yeah, he's still apparently thinking about it. I don't know why he's thinking so much. I mean, we have the internet now. We can backtrack the news so hey if it was 2019 it's 2019 mate so hurry up get 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 on board get on board ebay i mean if ebay doesn't work out you can go amazon anyways all right um last thing enzyme our um venture fund 
um, is actually now, let me check, let me refresh this. We are now $112,142, uh, $112, I can't even pronounce it, $112,142.80 assets under management. And that's in five days. Mate, you've been speaking Farsi so long, you forgot English. Mate. <laughs> that's exactly what it is. <laughs> and now I, now I hear you. Now I hear your English accent, and I'm like, who the hell is this? <laughs> no, there's no Farsi accents. Yeah, yeah, there's no Farsi accents. No, we're a Brit boy. So yeah. Uh, where's, that, where's that enzyme today, eh? One hundred and twelve thousand dollars, everyone. One hundred and twelve thousand dollars assets. $112,000 assets under management within five days, <laughs> within five days, within five days. I mean, that's amazing. I mean, the whole plan was within six months, I'll be, uh, we'll have 1 million, but in five days, we made one tenth of a million. I mean, if this keeps going on the 30th day, we'll be on the front page and I'll be on a pump podcast trying to explain the whole fund. And what's our tactics and what's everything. So that would be great. That'll be amazing because, to be honest, if you look at um, uh, the the top the top ten people on this fund, um, there's a fund called the uh, T- Takemi Capital. Um, these guys were actually on a podcast, and it was a very famous podcast called the Bitcoin Channel Podcast. I listened to it on Spotify. And the owner of this company, I think his name is Josh. I don't know, Josh, something like that. Let me let me quickly read his name. He has his name here. His name is, he doesn't write his name. Oh yeah, his name is Josh. Yeah, I was right. So his name is Josh. He was on a podcast. He was explaining his fund and he did get quite a new uh, couple of investors. But yeah, he, he owns a real fund as well, um, but he has only 4.4 million assets under management. And he, he's been doing this since January. And uh, yeah, I, I've been listening to his podcast and he was explaining to people that the whole point of these uh, these protocols is that the whole, listen, the DeFi application, DeFi basically means decentralized uh, institutional fund uh, organization. Basically, you don't need permission anymore. You can be anywhere around the world. And as long as you know who the investor is on the other side and you trust them, why couldn't you, why couldn't anyone invest their money? Why couldn't anyone invest their money? That's what I'm, the whole point of this is that you can be anywhere in the world and you can invest your money regardless. Oh my God. Okay. I disconnected. Jeez. Guys, I disconnected on Zoom. Sorry. Uh, can anyone hear me? Yes. Yeah, we got you. Okay, great. I don't know where I, I I don't know what happened to me. It just it just caught oh, off. All good. And, uh, you were handing it off to me, and I was gonna take over. From take you. over, take over, Kevin. Take over. <laughs> just to let you know, just to let you know, um, this is getting recorded. Just to let you know, if that's okay with you. I'm good, mate. No, I'm just kidding. We're here to support you, mate. Okay. I'm, I'm the marketer, so if you need to go from 110 to 1 million, say the word. <laughs> Okay, I'm rubbing the genie now. I'm rubbing the genie now. Hey, genie. No genie, just cheerleader. Not cheerleader. Okay, great. So the whole point of these funds is that you don't need any permission from anyone. So why couldn't people from around the world go and put their money in JP Morgan and let them invest? Why does it have to be 1 million? Why does it have to be, it's not even 1 million, it's like 15 million. Why do you have to have 15 million so they can trade it for you? Why? And why do I have to sign a contract of a five-year release form? Why? Well, what's with all these paperwork? And then if you try to leave, they charge you like 50% of your total net worth. Why? And it's not even transparent. They don't. You don't even know what they're doing with your money. And the whole point of this is that it's open, it's decentralized, it's transparent. You know what's going on. You know that your money can never be stolen or anything because it's you that is connecting the wallet. As long as you have your 24 or 12 wallet, uh, 12 uh, key phrases, you're fine. You're you're the owner. Even if the company, even if like the, the vote manager dies, you can still withdraw. You don't have to ask permission. That's the whole point of having all these, uh, this whole entire ecosystem. And guess what? The enzyme network monitor, 
is actually growing every day. A week ago, this was no, actually not a week ago because I've been looking at this for three months now. It was 20 million assets under management. Now it's 40 million. 1,127 people control $40 million. Now imagine when, this is just a fraction, it's not even a fraction. My, my Telegram group has more members in this. Imagine when people find out that you can invest your money without, without, without even trusting the other person. You obviously have to trust them because it's your money, but the fact that you can withdraw without doing, like, like asking them, can I withdraw? You can just withdraw. That's the best thing about it. That's what I always say. Like, wouldn't it be nice that you live in a world where everything is open, clean, and honest? And this is this is as honest as it gets. And I hope other applications in the future do become like this because they're going to come and they're going to come hard. Next year, you got AI bots coming out. The first ever decentralized AI bot. That's, that's the big thing. These are big things and they're coming to hit you hard. Now, the technology is great. Uh, and the big daddy is Bitcoin, and it's always going to be Bitcoin. But every every little crumb, they, they have its use cases, and and that's what I'm trying to tell tell everyone that once you find these little hidden gems, because this is a hidden gem, this this gem has been around since 2016, well 2017 actually, yeah 2016, end of 2016, it's been around the market for nearly five years, four years, and yet nobody knows about it and nobody understands it. But the whole point is these people don't market. They do not market themselves. They don't want to market themselves because they want the market to come to them. And that's what I've been trying to tell you all my trades. Let the money come to you, okay? Don't chase these 100x gains that you see on YouTube because they're not going to they're not gonna do anything. These, these YouTubers and these stuff, you find the 100x gains. Enzyme Finance. I found it by luck. Someone actually told me about it. He said, bro, you're such a good trader. I would so 100% invest in your fund because I, I seen your portfolio, your portfolio you've done massive gains. You should do it. And that was three months ago. And I took his advice. I was like, let me have a look. Let me research. So you you guys when are all Lambo. here. When Lambo? Next year, maybe December, actually. Maybe December of this year. Who knows? A Ferrari. When Lambo? For when, our, moon. when moon when moon uh, moon's coming the moon is we're going the moon's going to come to us the moon is coming to us we're not going to the moon the moon needs us so hey. once people like we have a connection on clubhouse this is for the people on zoom there is a connection in this world that we never had before and as long as you guys are all using this connection and learning from it and learning more like hold up we have Bitcoin, we have Ethereum, we have Chainlink, we teach all these coins. Uh, every day I'm on, I'm on Zoom, I'm on Clubhouse. And the whole point is, even when we do technicals, technicals mean nothing if there's no fundamentals behind it. Like there are some technical charts, such as Dogecoin, if I show it to you guys, I can't do technicals on it. I really cannot. I've tried to do some technicals though. Look, this is the weekly, right? I can't do any technicals. There you go. That is the technicals that I can do. And I can do a, uh, uh, <laughs> and, uh, that's it. That's basically it. I can't do any more than this. There you go. That is the technicals for Dogecoin. It's going up. It's going up to 40, 42 cents. That is it. That's all the technicals I can say. And if it drops down, it goes to 38 cents. The stuff like this, there's no tech, there's no fundamentals, so the technicals don't make sense. But once you have the fundamentals, you have the sentiment, uh, you have everything all aligned, then you have a great, uh, great fund. You have a great portfolio, and that, that's what Enzyme Finance, about my fund, is trying to do. Is that once you have all three of these, then it's a good fund. Any any fund that does this is a great fund. Okay, um, I'm going to stop the recording here. You know, it's, it's been a great session, especially in English.